Good morning, everyone. My name is Mark Zogden. I'm originally from Washington, D.C. I currently now live in Cary, North Carolina, about maybe 15 minutes from here. I'm really excited to talk to you about my story and how network security is very vital in society today, especially as society's fast pace changing, technology is picking up, and people in the business world need to be able to have access to keep their documents and their information safe. So a short story, I have a, a friend of mine who I know who she had her network uh, you know, uh, hijacked, had it you know, taken over, and she ended up losing almost $300,000 of her money from someone hacking her network. She's had to start her life all over again. This is probably someone she's talking about her mid to late 50s. She had worked hard to amass this, these dollars for herself and for her family. Someone hijacked her network. It's all gone. So what you all do in this room as renewal specialists, trying to keep businesses to keep that network security up to date and make it very simple and effective is a very important job. So what I'm going to do is tell you some strategies and things about that, but also share with you my life of how almost six and a half years ago, I was bankrupt, broke, and I was one week away from being homeless. Efficiency. Creating processes to achieve fiscal gain. Every one of your clients you are talking to are people who are what? They are busy. They are on the go. Things are moving. So what you all need to focus on is how working with Cisco, with the network security and keeping that renewal and going will help them save time. They need to understand that their business is very important and that keeping that security, that data, everything they have private is important. But people want things to be efficient. Time is of the essence. These people that you're speaking to don't have a lot of time and they don't really sometimes know all the ins and outs of the security. But what do they know? If you are creating for them value which is something considered to be important and beneficial to someone, if you are giving value to them, then what? They want to continue to work with you. It's easier to get someone to renew and work with you if you provide value for them throughout the entire process. And later on in the presentation, I will give you some action steps that I feel will help you create value and show them that Cisco is super efficient with the network security you provide. This is a picture of Aristotle. Over 2,000 years ago in his retort, he wrote five things you can do to persuade people to want to work with you and continue to work with you. It's amazing how in our day today, these five things are still prevalent and what you do in society in the world of sales. Number one is character. If people think you are out just to transactionally get their dollars, they will see right through you. I understand you have to meet quotas, make numbers, I get it. But people want to be treated as a value asset. They don't want to be treated as transactional sales. So your character and how you interact with them is going to help you to differentiate yourself from other people that might try to what? Pilfer and or take that business from Cisco. Number two is reason. Talked about it before. How are you going to be efficient? Where's the value? Are you interacting with them in a way that's authentic? People can tell if you're not authentic. The way I got here was one of my clients, Baco, referred me over to Andrew. If I had not built an authentic relationship with Jeff, I would not have worked for Baco and I wouldn't be here today. But again, you have to give them a reason through how you're going to help them become more efficient and help give them value to drive that renewal business. It is imperative. Number three is emotion. If you don't have passion or emotion, people are not going to work with you. Plain and simple. 
They want to know if you have some type of real passion for their business. So emotion helps to show that. Number four is metaphors. Talking to them in a language that they understand. Short stories are a powerful way to get your message across to people in a very concise time frame. Warren Buffett says it best, I love to invest in economic castles that are surrounded by moats, which means he wants businesses that have a great opportunity to go up that's hard to break into. So what you are doing as network security renewal specialists you have to be sure that these five things are prevalent throughout your interaction with Cisco's current clients. Because if they see that, if they feel it, if they believe it, it is going to be so much easier to get them to renew and continue to work with your organization. Plain and simple. Everybody says, how can I stand out? If you can master these five things that are over 2,000 years old, you have the best chance of standing out and succeeding at your business. So now, I'm going to tell you my story. So I'm from Washington, D.C. Guy on the left is my father. Guy on the right is my brother, who was six foot nine, 360 pounds in the eighth grade, played the National Football League for 12 years. We were raised by a single father. Why this is up here is I learned about perseverance from this man. He was diagnosed with kidney failure when he was 45 years old. He lost everything to take care of his boys. When my parents divorced, my mom just left Christmas morning. She had to go find herself. He put everything he had into my brother and I. And where we got to, we had NFL careers. We were successful. He died a poor man. But he persevered through everything, being sick having issues, not having any money, to make sure we could stand on our own two feet and grow to be successful men that respect women, ourselves, and are education driven. So I actually ended up going to Howard University, Washington, D.C. I only got one scholarship offer. That's it, just one. My brother got 132 of 132 schools. Every school wanted him. I got one. But I tell everybody all the time, in sales, it only takes one. That's all it takes. And the fact you are trying to renew clients, they already, are ha already have a leg up. But what you have to do is remember the clients are people. They're people. It's all about efficiency, value, and making them feel what? Special that they have, you have their business. That's key. I got to Howard University, I got drafted to the National Football League in 2003. I thought my career was over after high school football, went to Howard University, had a six year career in the National Football League. I persevered through every obstacle, everyone said, Marsh, you would fail in life. You're not your brother, you're not that good, you don't have any skill sets, what do you do? This man right here, Jack Del Rio, who was my rookie head coach, it was actually his rookie head coach season said this, if you want to be successful in life, be your own CEO. You all work for Cisco, but you are your own CEO. You have to be accountable for what you do every single day. Are you going to get up with a positive attitude? Are you going to get up and say, man, we didn't hit our numbers, this is not a good day? Are you going to go talk to a client you're trying to renew with a smile on your face? Or are you going to talk to them like, man, I don't really want to be here. You don't sign with us, oh well. People can feel if you want to be somewhere. This is my passion. This is what I love to do. You all are helping people to secure their business. It is vital. Again, technology is fast paced changing. You all have a very important job to help people keep things in house. At my NFL career, I struggled with transition. I got hooked on alcohol, painkillers. I wasn't prepared to make that transition. Just like people you're working with, they don't really want to go somewhere else. They brought, they have, Cisco is Cisco. It's a global brand. 
You all have the goods. But people go somewhere if they what? Don't feel valued. If they don't feel special. If they don't feel that you're actually looking at them more than just a dollar sign. I understand you have a job to do. But remember, the people that you are trying to engage, that is your job. That's your job. If they feel valued when it's time to renew, man, I, where do I sign up? But if they're questioning your character or they're questioning what's going on, they're going to what? More than likely, someone's going to give them a better offer, they're going to transition. They don't know what's out there, but they want to take a gamble. So when I left the National Football League, it was very hard on me, extremely hard. But fortunately, I actually found my next passion, which was my construction company. I told this story to Jeff. When I had my construction business in the first couple of years, no success. When we got to become successful around year three, I had a network issue. I got sent an email from the IRS that we thought was valid. We were about to pay a huge taxes to them that we thought was legal, that we thought was what it was. I asked, you know what, let me just call and confirm. Call them, Mr. Ogden, you don't owe anything. You got, you got, you got hacked. Your email got hacked. I was about to write a check for almost $50,000 that could have easily put our company in a really bad spot. Really bad spot. But because I double checked, it didn't happen. But eventually, because I stopped giving value to people, I became inefficient, I became arrogant, and I became lazy, I lost my company anyway. In 2013, I got overextended on a project. I spent through almost $3 million in 90 days. $3 million in a job working for Johns Hopkins Hospital. Finished the job, I shook my client's hand. They said, Marcus, great job. Thank you for doing what you had to do. Oh, by the way, we are not gonna pay your change order. We're not gonna do it. You bought that part of your contract, it's on you. I said, what? Literally, ladies and gentlemen, I went bankrupt. Everything I had worked hard for. So I talked to, I was talking to you earlier. As you all get a new system, things happen. You have to upload new things, do more data, write things in. Yes, it's not fun. I understand that. But it's part of your job. You have to be able to execute at a high level. Don't become like me. Somebody asked me a question last Friday. Marcus, if you could take back and have a business, what would you do differently? I said I would have remained humble. I had no humility, none. And I listened to nobody, nobody. You didn't agree with me, you were fired. So what we're trying to do here is give you all what you need and inform you of how to become what? A better team. The better your team is, the easier it is for you all to succeed as a group. So when I went bankrupt, ladies and gentlemen, everything I had was gone. Moved down to North Carolina, I had $250 in the bank. That's it. I was one week away from being homeless. I had a job at Merrill Lynch. I got fired because I did not ask for help to become a better financial planner. Got a job the next day to a construction company. Fired five days later. They shut down that division of the company. Shut it down. The only job I could get was a custodian. I made $8.25 an hour. And like I tell everybody, this was not a play for me while I was embarrassed. I had a job, I had bills to pay, I had family. You all have a job to do. It's some days will be easier, some days it won't. But at least you all have a job with an organization that's a juggernaut, that people know it's a global brand. But you have to meet them halfway. You have to bring to the table the passion, the character, the emotion, the reason. You do that, you have a better chance of being successful. Cisco will give you what you need. That's what it is. But people have to know that you're more than just Cisco. You are a person that values them. So for me, this was my life. Then my pivotal moment was when someone's spoiled milk got on my bare skin at 4 o'clock in the morning dumping the trash. I worked downtown Raleigh, Glenwood Avenue, 2013. Taking the trash, dumped it, the bag had a rip. I threw the bag forward, 
there was a rip, all the trash came right back on my body, on my skin, on my clothes, everywhere. And that's when I said, enough's enough. That was my pivotal moment saying, I have got to turn my life around. My pivotal moment is mine. What's yours? When are you going to say, all right, I didn't do as well as I wanted to this quarter, baby. How can I have a pivotal moment to bounce back to get where I need to be? These are the questions you have to ask yourself when you're in the world of sales, especially renewal sales of network security, because people need to know you value them. So I had my moment, and I said, all right, can I get my life together? I decided to write an autobiography of my life, tell me my story, and then, as a speaker, people said, you actually have some credentials, you have some ability, you have a reason, I know why you can help us. And I started doing more speaking on national stages, that's me for Home Depot. It's the same thing for you all, trying to get people to know that those clients you're speaking to, you deserve and they need to stay with you because you value them, you have the credentials to give them what they need. So this is my life in the last six years. Custodian with eight dollars an hour, broke, frustrated, always blaming other people for my failures and my faults and me not achieving success. If it wasn't me, it was every someone else's problem. Got my life together, wrote my autobiography, now I'm doing what I need to do. So that's my short story. Now, I have a question for you. Here's the challenge. I challenge every audience I speak for, asking them a burning question, problem, or element that they should be solving with their business strategy. You have to push past no to get to yes. I was told no for 30 straight months on every speaking job I went after. 30 straight months of no. But I tell everyone that you have to look at no as the next offer. You have to keep pushing through the no's. If you like to hear the word no, you're in the wrong room. You shouldn't like to hear it, but it's part of life. But don't let that no become a no today, a no tomorrow, a no this week, and then a no for a month. At some point, you have to make a stand and say, I'm going to do something to help fix what I'm not doing correctly. So here are some strategies I feel can help you when it comes to helping you all succeed at renewing network security for your clients. Number one is you have to set up efficient systems with those clients. Set up some type of system that you will be held accountable to yourself and to the client so they know that they matter. If the client knows they matter, then that's the ones that are going to say, time to renew, where do I resign? So set up an efficient system. Number two, connect with them authentically. I don't say connect with them where, hey, how's everything going? You doing okay? Great. And I'll talk to you next month. Get to know them. Be authentic. The way I connected with Jeff was I started training his son in football. I know Jeff likes sports. I know Andrew likes sports. Figure out what people like and connect authentically. Like I said earlier, they are people. They need to know you have an authentic connection with them. Number three, listen genuinely. When your clients are speaking, let them talk. So many people in sales want to talk first, listen second, it's the other way around. You have to hear what, they're, what they like, what they don't like, what's going well for them, what's not going well for them. Listen to them genuinely gives you the best chance to do this step, which is actually create some type of real value. Real value. Like we said earlier, you all have the company behind you, but it's got to be more than that. It has to be a value add that they say, this, this sales rep cares about me, my business, my vision, I know I can count on them to help me grow. Be someone that's different, that that client knows you don't just care about them from a network security standpoint, but you might be able to help them meet up and have a diligent follow-up system 
that you and the client both know is going to be something you all can stick to. If you can do these five things, it'll help you with the process. Now, these are value drivers in business as you're in situations can help you when you're talking to people on the phone. Number one, pattern recognition. Every client you talk to likes something. Either a movie, either a sport, either a person, art, music, it doesn't matter. Everybody has a pattern. I connected with the high up executive from Invisalign because he likes fancy football, so do I. Now we have a connection, I'm looking to speak for Invisalign next year. It's the same thing with you. What does your potential client that you're working with, what do they like? Pattern recognition. Number two, scenario planning. Have a way, if it's going good, if it's middle of the road or it's bad, how you're going to react. Don't get caught like a deer in headlights thinking they, they think you don't know what's going on. So pattern recognition, scenario planning, and market analysis. Know what other people who are your competition are doing in that market and figure out how you can do better than them and give the client more. In this day and age, everybody has comparable products. But what needs to show is that you know what the person is doing, the competition is doing, so you can go above and beyond for those clients. You do that, you're going to have a very high renewal rate of network security. So that's situational awareness. Sales strategies and tactics. Assess your resources. Cisco will give you what you need. You need to assess where you are, what your needs are, and be sure that the team leaders know what you need to get your job done. Number two, create a strategic plan. What are you all going to do for Q2, Q3, Q4? You have to have a strategic long-term plan. But if you have that plan but no tactical plan, it's going to be really hard to achieve your strategic plan. So if you have a one-year goal, but you don't know what you're going to do day one, day two, week one, week two, to get to Q1, Q2, you're going to make it very hard to achieve the goals that you want. So a strategic plan is your 30,000 square foot view. Your tactical plan is the things you do on the ground every day to get you to where you want to be for the long haul. That's the difference. Strategic execution. Stakeholder communication. When you're talking to a business owner that's a decision maker, you need to know exactly what that person likes and how to communicate with them to make them feel special. When I bought our network security, the company knew what I liked. So they would talk to me about that. Oh, hey, Mark, let's go check out a Ravens game. Like, they went above and beyond to make sure that they were talking to me in a way that I liked it and understood, and that have had me continue to give them my business. So if you're talking to a stakeholder, understand what they need to hear to want to continue to move forward with you. The second one is cross-functional collaboration. If you're talking to someone that's a level manager, an assistant, you need to talk to them in another way to get to the stakeholder. They may have different lights. It's important to know that. But cross-functional collaboration is important because sometimes, and most of the time, the stakeholder is busy. So you may not get them in the beginning. So you need to understand when you're talking to a cross-functional person who will help you go up the chain, you've got to get them interested in wanting to like you, refer you to that stakeholder. It's very important, okay? Because a stakeholder you may not get all the time. And then the third one is team development. Meetings like these, having dialogue, having conversation on what's working, what's not working. What do you all see as a good thing to attack? What's a strength? What's a weakness? I just did a speaking job in Florida. They did a SWOT analysis. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. 
Understand that the team development is here for you to succeed for the long haul. That's one thing I did not do in my company, which is why we filed a Chapter 7 bankruptcy. The next one, performance visualization. Number one is when you're talking to people, it is absolutely important to be cognitive, not emotional. If a person you're speaking to, a stakeholder, a client, is not happy with the service, do not become emotional. It's not personal. They are the client, so be cognitive. Hear them out. What is their issues? What is their problem? How can you help create value to fix that problem? The worst thing people do is when someone on the other line they're trying to work with or is their client is emotional, then they get emotional. And then when you both are emotional and you start arguing, nothing good comes of it, and more likely than not, you will lose that client. So be cognitive, not emotional. All right? Anticipate, prepare, execute. You have to anticipate what your goals are, what you need to do each Q, each quarter. And then you have to prepare a strategy to get that done, and then you have to execute that strategy. Observe, orient, decide, act. 100% of our society observe what goes on around them. 60% actually orient or process what they see. 25% make a decision on what they need to do, but only two to 4% act on that decision. So if you wanna be successful, be part of that two to 4% that acts on getting things done to get your sales numbers accomplished. And the last one at this point right here is deliver high value presentations. People are visual. When you're talking to someone and you're trying to get them to renew and you're showing them things, make sure the presentation is high value and visual and use the color blue. Blue is soothing to the eye, people like it, and it calms them if they're in a situation where they might have anxiety. Because again, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, people don't know about network security. They don't know what it is. Like when I paid money for my security company, I didn't know what I was buying. I just didn't say, look, I can help you keep your documents safe. Good enough for me. That's what I did. So the way they showed me through the presentations and they gave me customer service and they were just consistent, it kept my business. But I've seen the color blue is very appealing and soothing to the eye. Just a point of emphasis. So now, here's my final thought. I'm going to leave you with be confident in your ability to succeed. Cisco hired you for a reason. They don't have to hire just anybody. Trust me, there are companies out there that do that. So the fact you're here, you should be confident in your abilities. But remember, people you're dealing with are exactly that. They're people. They are emotional. They sometimes are cognitive. They have good days, they have bad days. They are reasonable, and they can be pricks. It is what it is. But you have to understand something. You have to go through that, push through that, and give them a high value presentation, excellent customer service, and are consistent delivering them value throughout the entire process. And if you do that, you have the best chance of renewing that network security client.